Um, I filmed a video on Tuesday. It was a 40 minute long recording of me talking about Taylor Swift. And I was like, you know, I don't really like this video. So I like half finished editing it and I might post it later, but I might just re-record it because I, I, I just wasn't really happy with it. But um, I was just looking at my library today and I decided I wanted to talk about a book that I've never met someone else who has read this book. I've only ever met people who read this book for a specific class that I took um, part of my undergrad degree. I had to take an undergrad class and the class was called Women in Madness and it was essentially the history of psychology for women. So it talked a lot about how psychology developed over the years just in like the medical field. But then it also focused on how women were treated and how like we looked into really interesting case studies. Um, like there's like a Clint Eastwood movie called Changeling uh, starring Angelina Jolie, which is based upon a true story about a woman whose son went missing. The LAPD wasn't doing anything. This was in the 20s, I believe. And um, they brought her home a, a young boy and said, this is your son. She said, this is not my son. And they basically, uh, institutionalized her because she said this isn't my son because it wasn't her son they just brought her home a random kid and was like here you go and um the church basically saved her from being um like completely locked away forever basically because they actually did find her son um i believe he was killed uh or he like barely survived i don't recall but either way well Actually, it's good, I didn't spoil it, so if you watch the movie, you won't know. Um, anyway, so I took this really interesting class, and we read some books, we watched some movies, and one of the books that we read was this book called Willow Weep For Me by Mary Nana Amadankwa. And um, it really changed the way that I viewed mental health um, for women, and then just like the experience from like the 50s through now, and like how people have viewed mental health and also how they've taken care of themselves and other people. I also thought that it was great because I feel like I've been really privileged in my own mental health journey because I've had doctors that have taken care of me and believed me. I haven't had people dismiss me in the way that a lot of other people have had. This book was really enlightening to me especially because I feel that I learned a lot about the treatment of black women in the medical field because a lot of the time they are dismissed. I mean, and women in general are dismissed often, especially about um, any kind of like GYN pain, like anything you'd go to an obstetrician for. That's already an issue in the industry, but uh, black women are dismissed more obviously. And um, this book was really interesting, not only to learn about her, this lady's treatment in the industry, but she also speaks a lot about her upbringing because it is a memoir. Uh, it's called Willow Wood for Me, A Black Woman's Journey Through Depression. And um, it was kind of like a breath of fresh air compared to a lot of the other things that we'd been studying for this class because we were studying the full range of things like from a regular lady with depression to um, someone whose son had been taken away like in Changeling. We also studied the Papin sisters from France who like murdered the, the family that they lived with. So we were kind of all over the spectrum of health and um, I really enjoyed reading this book. It was really well written. And um, actually when I picked it up off the shelf today, I found a to-do list <laughs> from when I first read it uh, five years ago. And um, I kind of wanted to talk about it because I think more people should read it. It's very underrated. I think um, Miss Donkwa is an exceptional writer. She's clearly very smart and it was really brave of her to share her story because a lot of it is really sensitive and like a very scary thing to have shared. I thought this book was really moving. It made me cry a lot um, and she just had some really really great perspective to share on depression and um, it felt very personal to me. I mean, she was talking about like the medication she was on and like she was talking about Zoloft, which was something that I was prescribed at the time and I took Zoloft for five years and I had just started to kind of wean off of it without doctor permission at that time. And um, I remember feeling that it really applied to me when I read it and um, it's always really interesting to relate to an author or a story 
and kind of wish you weren't relating because you're like, oh, I relate in the bad way. I relate in the ouch, my heart hurts way. And that was definitely how it felt reading this book. I feel like the inside of this book and the intelligence of this book is really, really clear. It's, it's, it's very, it's got very sensitive material in it. There's some stuff that like, like, had I not been in a healthier mindset, it could have really like sent me down a rabbit hole. Like it was, it's really hard to read in some parts. And um, she talks a lot about like, not only growing up as a young black lady, but also being a mother and being put in a position where you cannot care for yourself, but you also have to care for another person and how impossible that is. And I feel like the perspective of things like uh, postpartum depression is also really interesting in this book. Okay, she had depression before I believe she even had a child. It was exacerbated after she had a child. I think um, the choices to have dialogue was good. I don't like it with memoir. I don't like memoirs in general. I don't usually care much for a memoir, especially if someone is famous. I think the reason that this memoir is able to work at all is because Miss Dunkwa is not famous. She's just a regular lady. She's a writer. She's an editor. And her experience is interesting to someone like me because she was born in Ghana, came to the United States as a child with her family, and then had a completely different upbringing and experience from me. I think when it comes to like a famous person writing their memoir, they're not actually telling you anything particularly interesting or deep about themselves. They're just kind of sharing what is safe to share. And this is like so, so intimate and just a really, really great and educational book for people, especially for people who don't really understand mental health. I think that she's able to word really complex things in a way that makes it easier for people who haven't experienced such things to understand, which is really hard to do in a memoir because you're not only speaking about yourself and your life experiences, but you're speaking about it in a way that has to make sense to other people. It's kind of like, uh, I took a directing workshop a year ago and we were reading and watching the scene from Beautiful. Um, it's a Spanish speaking film with Javier Bardem in it. And um, there's a scene in which an actor says he wanted to open the refrigerator door with wet feet. And we as Americans didn't know what that meant. It, it didn't make sense, it's not an American movie. And so we had to figure out what that actually meant. And so having a memoir that already does a lot of that work for you, it includes the cultural context, but also explains it in a way that'll make sense to people who aren't Ghanaian or even American. I just thought the book was really artful and um, beautiful. And I thought that, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to shed light onto it because I don't ever see anybody ever talking about it. And I feel really privileged to have gotten to read it, especially in an educational setting, because we were able to really talk about her experiences in a really like safe environment. Like I feel like it wasn't just like looking at dumb responses on Goodreads or like Amazon reviews or something like that. I feel uh, really connected to this book and I wish that I could recommend it to more people. So um, I, I just, I believe it deserves to be praised and I kind of wanted to shed some light on it. Yeah, I feel like I learned a lot from this book, especially the age that I read it. I was 18, I think maybe freshly 19 when I read it. And um, being 23 now, was it? I guess it wasn't five years ago, it was like four years ago now. Maybe I'll make a Taylor Swift video, I haven't decided. I feel like making a video about Mary Nana Amadankwa and then coming out with a Taylor Swift video would be kind of funny. I feel like it would be, I don't know, like, the two ends of a spectrum <laughs> but um, I do hope that eventually this book garners more praise and attention I think it deserves it and um, I don't know it was it was really great I was I feel really lucky to have read it this lady's life is really inspirational 
um, not only to other black immigrants, but just to women or other people in general. And I feel like it, there are certain experiences in people's lives that can break people down and it is part of the human experience to endure some kind of hardship in your life and she was unlucky enough to have a lot of hardship but she writes about it in a way that can really i feel people can really learn from and um, not very many people can do that turn something that they went through that was really really difficult and make it so they can teach other people how to endure and how to uh, be resilient. So I think that's pretty inspiring. I think Miss Donqua is very smart and a great writer and I, I hope that she writes again. I haven't, I've read a couple of her articles and essays, but um, I do hope that she continues on in her artistic endeavors. And um, if she wrote another, uh, memoir about being a grandmother or something like that I would love to read that um but yeah I think this book is really moving and if you have the opportunity to read it it's it's definitely great I think it's it's not dissimilar from this other book that I've been reading The Body Keeps the Score in which it's kind of discussing how like what it was like to be a part of this mental health world before it was as destigmatized as it is now. It's still stigmatized, don't get me wrong. For some people, being sad, having depression, wasn't even considered an illness. It was just like a fact of life. So making it into something that's diagnosable was very different. Like in this book, the very first chapter is about post-Vietnam War, United States veterans coming home and they were being diagnosed with schizophrenia because they didn't even have a diagnosis for PTSD yet. They didn't know what to do or how to, how to treat people. So I, I don't think that this is dissimilar. It's just kind of the opposite perspective of someone, um, you know, you have uh, American soldiers coming home and being treated poorly, but you also have people like Miss Donkwa who came to the United States as children are non-white women and not also not being treated well. So it's kind of really interesting to kind of ingest these two types of books at not just not the same time because I'm not reading this actively but um, it is interesting to think about it's kind of kind of cool to think about how so many people have so many different experiences and they're all really fascinating and figuring out what we can learn from them and how we can um, make it more understanding for people in the future like a lot of things that she went through in this book were avoidable. So being able to ingest it and learn about it and figuring out how we as people who are active members of society can keep ourselves from adding to any of that pain that people go through because at the end of the day, causing harm is the last thing that any of us wanna do. So I just went on Miss Donqua's Instagram and I actually saw that just two days ago she posted that there's going to be a 25th anniversary edition of her book released and there's going to be a new foreword written by someone else who I didn't remember and she's going to be writing a new afterward. So I'm hoping to get a copy of it and I'm really excited to read it.